Thank you all for joining us for our six Howard Mathematica Lunchtime Talk. During these chats while you chew, you'll meet interesting people or organizations that are doing cool and complimentary work to what you're currently learning about in the Summer Institute at Howard University. If you don't have your lunch yet, hit pause. For those of you with food and beverage in hand, let's get started. I'm proud to introduce some of our six Howard Mathematica alums who will introduce our speaker. Thanks, Nanette. My name is Nayantara Biswas, and I'm a PhD candidate in the Department of Economics at Clark University in Worcester, Massachusetts. My research lies in applied microeconomics, particularly in the fields of health, labor, and gender economics in low and middle income countries. In my dissertation, I measure the impact of community health workers on maternal and child health and labor outcomes in India. I am also a Six Howard Mathematica 2022 alum. My name is Regina Ebal. I'm a third year psychology PhD student at UC Berkeley and a Six Howard Mathematica 2021 alum. My name is Rashan Miles and I am a doctoral candidate at the University of Mississippi in the Department of Social Work. And I am a Six Howard Mathematica 2021 alum. And I'm honored to introduce Sarah Newman and Kasia Chmielinski from the Data Nutrition Project. Hi, everybody. I'm Newman from DNP. My pronouns are she, her. Hey, my name is Kasia Chmielinski. Uh, pronouns they, them, and I'm project lead of DNP. And I'm the research lead of DNP, and we're so thrilled to be here today sharing some of our work with you. I'm gonna be sharing the beginning of uh, the work and tell you a little bit about our background and where we came from and the kind of problem we're, problems we're trying to address and mitigate. And then I'll pass it over to Kasha to share more about what we're up to and what's coming next. So our project is called a nutrition label for data sets and we are the data nutrition project. And we started actually five, more than five years ago now with the goal of trying to empower data scientists and policymakers to improve AI outcomes through products and partnerships in an equitable way. Um, what does this mean? Well, we'll get to more of this in a little bit. But one thing to call out here is that we have a very interdisciplinary team. Um, our backgrounds come from product design, engineering, philosophy, design, um, and many other fields. And we see this as a real value in what we bring and what we do working in the AI space. So some of you, maybe even most of you are probably familiar with this problem, this social problem of seeing AI systems that are built on data sets that are not representative, whether the data sets are either overly representing a certain demographic group or another kind of group, whether they're not at all representing um, a certain group of people. What happens if you use a data set that's misrepresenting a population to, predict, to make predictions about the future is that you're just going to perpetuate whatever biases you have in the data set. So this became very widely known back in 2016 when ProPublica did an expose on the Compass data set, which was used to predict recidivism. And it turned out that this algorithm, which would, had been, you, you know, the hope was that it would be more neutral and less biased than judges, it turned out it was racist. And this is a problem we're seeing over and over. Um, the image here on the right is from a sexist um, job job recru recruitment tool um, where, and, and it's turned out that historically data scientists um, that had been successful had been men or had male names and Amazon ended up discriminating, discriminating against women as a result. So we see this over and over and over. We see it in the news. It's, it's become pretty much common understanding that poorly representative data will lead to poor outcomes. And what we realized is that this social problem is a data problem, and yet there's not a standard for documentation to accompany data sets that will actually help people understand what's in the data set so that they will avoid some of these problems that we know are so common now. When we looked around the data landscape, there's more and more data being produced, more and more data being stored. This data, as you all know, is used to train models that are very powerful, and we're seeing that more and more every day. And data sets don't have any requirements for what accompanies them in terms of whether they have, you know, 55 page PDF as part of their documentation, whether they have, you know, this much metadata, whether they have nothing at all. And we wanted to create something that was more standardized, that was quickly and easily legible to help those 
working with data to train models to, to prevent these bad outcomes that we were seeing. So our idea was to use the metaphor of a food nutrition label. We all know what it means to pick up a, pick up a package of food and read, read the back and see what's in the food. And we thought, why don't we do that for our data set? Of course, data set is different than a box of cookies, but you know, the, the metaphor actually works. So we thought, why don't we interrogate the data quality early in the development pipeline? Here on the left-hand side, you can see um, you start with the data set. And even before you pre-process the data, why not make a nutrition label to accompany that data set? So folks who are trying to build models and to do so responsibly will have something to consult because it's pretty, pretty much the wild west out there, um, as we've been told by data scientists in our research. And this is an early prototype we made in 2018 with a ProPublica data set, actually. Um, and it's it's evolved since since then, um, but this is you know an early prototype. And we worked more on the quantitative side. So we were really trying to measure what, what was measurable in the data set. And we also published a paper alongside this. And it's really important for us always to call out others that are working in this space. So around, and there's many more than, than are featured on this slide, but in 2018, at the same time we were working, a lot of other groups also noticed that this is a problem that we could do better to address. And some of these projects are intervening specifically at, at the data set stage, both our work and data sheets for data set sets, which is a project that came out of Microsoft research. And then there's work that's really focused more on the model itself, like Google's model cards about ML, which came out of partnership on AI, IBM fact sheets. Um, and then this, this project here on the left-hand side is actually one that I wanna make special attention, special attention to right now because it's a terrific project on, it's called Data Statements for Natural Language Processing. And this one is really specific for large language models. So as we're seeing so much now and so much attention to large language models, there has been a call since, you know, for, for many years that we need to be very careful with these systems and we need to produce legible, clear documentation about what's in the training data to prevent, um, you know, in the case of language models, certain kinds of speech that could be harmful. And you may have noticed this already, but something that we always want to point out is that we're really focused on our design and implementation. So because we have this very mixed team, we have researchers, but we also have product people and people coming out of industry, we know that there's always a tension between doing the kind of the depth of work in research that you might feel like you want to do and actually being on a deadline and not having a lot of time, maybe not having time to read 50 pages of documentation before you choose which data set you use. So we really care about being able to implement something that people can use. And one of the tactics we've used to do this is design. Said, so let's make something that's quickly legible, that if you have five minutes, you can get something out of it. If you have 15 seconds, you can still get something out of it. So it's really a design forward approach um, that focuses on making it usable. We've gone through several versions of our label and the most recent one you can see here at the bottom and I'm gonna pass it over to Kasha who's gonna tell us um, more about our current product. Thanks, Simon. Um, yeah, so uh, if you go to the next slide, we're gonna jump into the product overview. I think that's one of, as Newman mentioned, that's one of the kind of core strengths of our team is that we're super interdisciplinary. So in addition to writing the paper and having a prototype, we also have a build team. And we've been working really hard on translating our methodology into something that people can actually use, build, launch, um, and leverage uh, in the real world. So if you go to the next slide, please. Um, there are kind of three parts of what we've built. The first is a label, which we've talked about. Uh, this is a, a screenshot, a recent screenshot of it. Um, and we're about to launch it. Uh, so it's, it's out in the world, but right now in beta, and we're excited to get it out there uh, more in more production-like form very soon. The way that this label is constructed, you know, the left-hand column is really about understanding the data. So it's kind of your traditional metadata. It tells you the description of the data set, the keywords that are related to it, you know, who made the data set and how many instances are in there, the relevant dates. Um, on the right-hand side, though, we've really focused two-thirds of the page on using the data. So a lot of documentation is really just going to tell you about the data so you can understand it. We're really focused on what's the use case. So that top, you know, uh, two by two there with the colors are all about use cases. What was this data originally intended to be used for? Why was it collected? Um, 
what are some of the ways it has been used, which may or may not be good, right? But here are the ways it is out there in the world. Uh, how is how is there how are there restrictions on the use? If you know, in terms of licensing or other types of things, and what are domains or cases in which you really should not be using this data? Um, and so that's really important. We put that right at the top. There are then a bunch of risks that are underneath that that are related to various parts and um, components of the data in terms of the content or the rows or the, or the, or the columns. Uh, and we try to call all of that out. The last thing I'll mention here is that there's also the label for the label, which is the, the top kind of blue banner on the top, um, which helps you understand the label itself. Uh, and what we're really trying to do is make it very clear and very easy and standardized in a designed way for someone to quickly jump onto the page and understand the major components of the data set before they use it. Next, please. So that's the that's the label. The next part is that, you know, we were sitting there and we had this beautiful label and we thought, well, now we have to make it easy for people to actually make the label. Um, so we created a label maker. This is a little bit like a TurboTax. Uh, so it's a smart form um, and it helps people navigate the process of getting this information out of their heads or out of their existing documentation into this structured way so that we can present it on the label. Um, the way it works here is you, you fill in the information, that's the middle pane, in there and then you submit the label for review. Um, you know, you can just have a label that is not reviewed by any expert. That's how documentation works today. So you can have a draft of that and you can use that and that will be live. Uh, you, you can also have it reviewed by experts. Right now it's our team, but we hope to kind of grow that um, that that portion of our of our team and the product so that you can actually get people who are in that domain. So if you have data about psychology or uh, tenants or, you know, housing in New York, something like that, you'd actually have people who are experts in those in those fields take a look and make sure that your data set documentation looks good. Next slide, please. And the third component, which really underlies all of this, is the methodology of label itself. And this is these are the questions that people have to answer in order to um, actually fill that label with content. So these are all of the things, these are all the questions that are in the survey. Um, the reason that I call this out separately is that, you know, this is also open and available. So if people want to just look at these questions and build their own label maker, build their own label, um, we're perfectly happy for people to do that. We think that a rising tide floats all boats. And so we're very happy for people to have better questions that they are asking of their data um, at the time that they make the data and also at the time that they publish the data. We found that through our work with data scientists and our testing, our kind of user testing, um, that the label is also very useful as a methodology uh, for teaching. So we've done a lot of label making parties. Uh, this is two of our parties here. One was in Austria and the other was in Cambridge. Um, and we worked with students to collect our own data sets and then also build labels for those other existing data sets. Uh, and it turns out that building the label and going through these questions um, is actually a great way for people to start to interrogate their own understanding of data and the way that maybe they need to approach data differently in order to have better and more representative data sets. Next slide, please. So we've had a lot of conversations. We're very much in the space. Um, we're also used as part of certification systems that are being built, like the Responsible AI Institute has a certification um, that is at the system level, and we're kind of the data component. And we've also been been cited as um, you know potential data set documentation techniques at conferences like NeurIPS. And I think I'm going to um, pass this back to Newman to talk a little bit about one of the kinds of engagements that we've done. You know, we as a team, we advise others on data quality. We kind of influence other people's builds and help them build things, uh, thinking through our methodology and maybe applying our methodology. Um, we do some teaching and some convenings, and, and we also consult on this verification process. So I'm going to hand it over to Newman to talk about one of the recent engagements that we had with the UN. Great. Thanks, Kasha. And I think just to the Kasha's last point about the different kind of partnerships we have, we really like working with other people and we're continuously learning through these collaborations. So if you're interested in this, if you have questions about it, please do know that you can reach out to us. We're a small team, but we're really friendly and we really love collaborating and learning from, from others. And um, our team is, you know, we showed a slide earlier of our team, but it's actually bigger than what's even represented. We're always kind of expanding and contracting depending on the particular work stream. So one of our recent one of our recent engagements was um, a really terrific opportunity to work with a UN 
Center for um, Humanitarian Data, HDX is the acronym that they use. Um, they have a humanitarian data exchange. And this wasn't using the label we've already built, but it was actually building something for their repository with them to surface the needs that they have. And as you can see here, it's the, the humanitarian data exchange is the largest open platform for sharing data across crises and organizations. And they have over 20,000 data sets and they reached out to us specifically because we've been working to surface information and data that's important and valuable that people might want to know when they're searching or finding a data set. And they're trying to help people find the right kind of data sets of their 20 plus thousand data sets on their, in their repository. Um, and they have their own challenges because humanitarian um, crisis data is often collected under less than ideal conditions, often hastily, and often other people are looking for that data very quickly and needing to find that data very quickly. But what information is about that data could be better surfaced and shown to help in that search process is something that they're struggling with. Um, so, you know, we've been thinking about this for a long time and we think about data quality and how to surface information about data sets in uh, like a design forward way. And so we came in to work with them on this project. I'll also mention that, you know, the reason that all of us are doing this work is because we care about trying to make the world better and all the problems that we see out there and doing something with the UN specifically on crisis data was both inspiring and humbling for us as a team because the kinds of issues that they're they're dealing with and the kind of people that are out on the ground collecting data is, is very much aligned with the kind of work we want to support. So we were really grateful for this opportunity. So as you can see here uh, on the left-hand panel is their a screenshot of their website, which is where this quality measures pain would sit. And on the right-hand side is a preview. Uh, this hasn't been implemented yet. This is very, very recent. But here on the right-hand side is a preview of what we've designed for them for this quality measures pain that surfaces four sections. One is use. So as Kasha explained earlier, how, it, how is the data set meant to be used? How has it been used? How should it not be used? Those kinds of questions are really essential for when you're helping people find data sets. How, how, you know, how should the data set be used and not used? Um, but that information isn't readily available in an accessible, legible way right now. Um, also questions about trust and safety. So is there personally identifiable information? Was there a quality assessment and what does that look like? So information about that is useful. Um, the content quality itself. So this has to do with um, whether the data set is being actively managed, when it was uploaded, um, whether it complies to some other standards that they have that HDX has internally that they've developed. And then there's questions about their technical specs, whether there's an API, whether it's um, in the standard called Hexel, which is um, an interoperability standard that they've internally developed, which makes data sets um, more sort of um, nimble and more agile, easier to merge or um, more extensible if they're in the same format. So these kinds of things are in the, in the quality measures pane that we've designed. And it's really been a chance to think about our approach not necessarily being exactly the same look as the label we've developed for, for broad use, but how can our approach of surfacing information in a legible, accessible way help data set repositories or help domain specific work? You know, in this particular case, this is a, a very specific domain of data. So can we customize the knowledge and expertise we have and apply it to certain domains to make something that's, that works best for the particular use case in mind? Um, so we wanted to leave you with that as one example of recent work, but as we're turning it um, over to you all for questions, things you might have be curious about. Um, so we'd also just love to hear your reactions to this or, um, you know, uh, from your own work or your own life, whether you feel this is relevant or whether there are other analogies that also seem to work well. Um, and we just look forward to the conversation. So uh, thank you all so much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I know our participants are looking forward to live Q&A with you during the Institute this summer. Thank you all for watching. For more information on SIX Howard Mathematica, visit our website, follow us on social media, and join our email list.